Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome back to The Daily Digital. My name is Junior, and I am the one in charge of keeping you all well-informed with what's going on in our digital world. Today's episode, we have a few topics here that I'm going to discuss. The first one being about Legos and how they are getting into the metaverse. The next one is going to be a metaverse that's coming out that actually looks really, really, really realistic. The next one that I have here is what certain analysts think about the metaverse, about Web3, about NFTs coming up in the next couple of years. And then the last one is going to be all about our NFTs and how we can display them directly through our Roku devices. And of course, today is Monday, so we have what we call Merchandise Mondays. But before we get into all of that, I'm going to take a quick break and then we'll jump right into it. All right, and I am back. And so the first thing that we have here today is all about Lego. So Lego and Epic Games. I think I mentioned to you guys before Epic Games. If you are a big video gamer, you've probably heard of Epic Games a couple of times before. They are really big in the gaming world, of course, with the name like Epic Games. But they also have a platform in which you can actually develop games. It's called Unreal Engine. We actually have another article here today that talks about Unreal Engine, but it looks like Epic Games and Lego is kind of going in hand in hand to develop basically a metaverse for children. A couple of key takes away from here are what I guess they call them three principles, which will ensure the digital spaces they develop, deliver, engaging play opportunities safely is going to be that protect. they're going to protect children's right to play by making safety and well-being a priority safeguard children's privacy by putting their best interests first and then lastly empower children and adults with the tools that give them control over their digital experience as you can see here epic games has exper expertise in building creative tools and immersive words that are open and accessible to players and developers everywhere it is at the forefront of popular culture, creating experiences that connect people through gaming, music, and creative collaboration. Epic is also committed to enabling developers to create age-appropriate experiences online and in 2020 acquired Super Awesome, a company that has pioneered technology designed to de deliver safe digital engagement with children under the age of 16. So, and this is on Epic Games um, website here. This was first published April the 7th, 2022. I actually went and did some cross checking here. And as you can see, went to the Lego website. They actually have the same exact article, April 7th, 2022. The Lego group and Epic Games team up to build a place for kids to play inside of the metaverse. I think this here was a video of a Twitter post. It's literally like five seconds long, but it was just kind of like showing, hey, yeah, we are actually getting into, we're actually getting into the metaverse with Epic Games. And like I mentioned, whoops, like I mentioned, this article here is like literally exactly the same. They've got the same three principles down here. They've got the same pretty much information everywhere. So not really much to talk about on this website. I just wanted to, Again, show you guys that I cross-checked it so that you can uh, be sure that a Legos, Lego metaverse is on the way. Uh, as the metaverse evolves, it is reshaping how people meet, how people play, how people work and learn and interact in the virtual 3D world. The Lego group and Epic Games will combine their extensive experience to ensure that the next iteration of the internet is designed from the outset with the well-being of kids in mind. And this is coming from Tim Sweeney, the CEO and co-founder of Epic Games. All right. So for the next thing that I have here is going to be about uh, a company called Hype. Um, geez, what is it called? Hype Cycle. Well, it's actually called Gartner, but Hype Cycle is basically their, um, it's kind of like a, a technology analyzing platform in which they basically go through analyzing all of these 
cool technologies that we have. And then they go ahead and figure out if it's all just for the hype or if it's actually something real that we should look into and continue to invest in. So to get a full breakdown of the company, I'm going to actually just play a quick snippet of their video. Uh, I think the video is like two to three minutes long, so I'm not going to go dive deep on that. And then I want to touch on something else here. But here's a video. AI, the Internet of Things, blockchain. Chances are you're overrun with data and information chaos. What you need is clarity and the answer to one critical question. Is the hype real? It's a question you, as a leader, will need to answer. This is where Gartner Hype Cycle comes in. The ultimate value of the hype cycle, which we've seen proven out again and again, is that it provides an objective map that helps you understand the real risks and opportunities of an innovation. So you can avoid adopting something too early, giving up too soon, adopting too late, or hanging on too long. Here's how we do it. Gardner Hype Cycles chart the path an innovation takes, from when it first enters a market to when a typical business is likely to benefit from it. We look at specific technologies like, say, machine learning, as well as trends, concepts, methodologies, and management disciplines. Chances are, if it's generating buzz in the world, and questions for you, we review it. There are currently 95 standard Gartner Hype Cycles. Some of the most popular include the hype cycles for emerging technologies, artificial intelligence, and the digital workplace. As for how it works, we start by taking an objective look at the expectations surrounding an innovation. That's the y-axis. Then we relate it to the proven value of that innovation over time. That's the x-axis. Then moving from left to right, we track an innovation as it moves through five predictable phases with some examples from recent hype cycles. Phase one is the innovation trigger. That's when an event like a technological breakthrough or a product launch gets people talking. Startups emerge, venture capital investment skyrockets, and first mover organizations start launching experiments. Phase two is the peak of inflated expectations. This is when the excitement brings in more suppliers and people using the product. There's a whole lot of media coverage and hype but there's still limited proof that the innovation can deliver what you need. Then there's phase three, the trough of disillusionment. This happens when the original excitement wears off and early adopters report predictable performance issues and low returns on investment. Phase four, the slope of enlightenment. This is when early adopters see initial benefits and others start to understand how to adapt the innovation to their organizations. Finally, we reach phase five, the plateau of productivity. At this point, more users are seeing real world benefits. The innovation goes mainstream. It often takes between three and five years for an innovation to move through the five phases. But of course, the speed varies and some don't stay the course. They disappear from the hype cycle or get replaced by something better. No one can predict the future, but hype cycles get as close as you can to tapping into deep research, surveys, and conversations with technology suppliers and Gartner clients. Clients can even select technologies that are most relevant to them. There is hype and there is reality. And with our hype cycles, you have the insight to make smarter decisions. Right, so there you have that there. Um, again, if you never heard of hype cycles before, they are definitely really good as far as doing like research and stuff like that for you so that you don't have to kind of get bogged down with all of the research that comes with it. And you can also keep up with the daily trend or the daily, weekly, yearly trends that is going on, especially with right now, the metaverse, NFTs, Web3 and all that stuff. All of that is really kind of taking over and as you can see here from this chart, the technology is really at its, I want to say its peak right now, but it's pretty much all at its peak. Um, and this article here that I have, I'll definitely share the link to it inside the description for the video. It has some, you know, some backlash going on as far as what they feel Gartner is. This is actually Gartner's website or whatever, but what they feel actually Gartner 
is missing or what they feel they got wrong, which is a bit, I, I kind of agree with a little bit of it. They're saying some of this is uh, in the wrong spot. As far as like NFTs, right now Gartner is saying that NFTs, they were at its peak, but now it's going down to the trough of disillusionment. And from there, we don't know. We don't know if it's going to break through the slope of enlightenment. We don't know if it's going to break through the plateau of productivity uh, for basically when businesses really start to implement and everything. Everything is all pretty much new. NFTs, decentralized identity, Web3, super apps, internal talent marketplaces, platform engineering, causal AI, um, metaverse, digital humans. Digital humans is actually going to be a really big one there. Generative design, AI, code, uh, machine learning, code generation, all that stuff is on this list. And it's saying that everything is pretty much brand new, um, except for like NFTs. I, I'm, I'm assuming because NFTs kind of exploded back in 2021. I feel like metaverse should be, because I mean, Decentraland has been around for quite some time too. It didn't explode as much as the NFTs because people couldn't find a way to make money off of it. So it didn't peak as much, but right now, once you start getting into more AR and um, VR technology, I think I feel like it's gonna actually increase there, uh, which I think one of these, yeah. So this one here uh, was the one from 2017. Virtual reality was kind of going through the slope of enlightenment. Augmented reality was at the trough, which I believe. I mean, these two are really kind of taken off there. Um, deep learning, machine learning, all that stuff was at its peak at that point. 4D printing was just kind of starting off. Human augmentation was just kind of starting off. So uh, definitely check out Gartner and what they have in store. I kind of follow them here and there. Not so, so much. I think I'm actually going to start to like look into them a bit more Uh now that I kind of understand a bit more about them and kind of understand their full scope of things. As you can see here, this timeline down here that's saying the metaverse has still about more than 10 years before it really takes off, uh, which is kind of weird because they're saying Web3 is going to only take off in about five to 10 years. Well, I don't know. I think, I think a lot of people are banking more on the metaverse than Web3 right now, but I'm not sure where all the technology and investment is going towards. I know VR is really big, AR is really big, so and, and that plays a big role inside of the metaverse as well. So we'll just have to kind of wait and see. Again, these are just people who kind of analyze the market based on a few different criteria and really see how these are taken off. So um, you have that there. All right, so the next thing that I have for you guys is going to be the merchandise of this week. It's Merchandise Monday, and for Merchandise Monday, we have a wristband well it's not just a wristband it's actually a wristband and other few things but this can actually help with any stress that you may have what it kind of does and i'll just go ahead and click that uh, what it kind of does is basically it hugs your body and sends off some um i want to call them neurotransmitters but that i guess it's not technically what that is let me kind of see if i can find that portion about the science behind it uh, rather than tracking your biometrics the apollo neuro i'm sorry this is called the apollo neuro i just kind of jump right into it uh, apollo neuro a p o l l o and then neuro is n e u r o um, it's, that's that's a dot com there and again this is um uh, just a device that kind of helps with your sleep and helps with your stress and stuff like that they call it a, a wearable hug <clears throat> for your not so nervous system. Um, provide scientifically proven touch therapy that you can wear as a band around your ankle, on your wrist, as a clip attached to your clothing. The Apollo device silent soothing vibrations speak to your nervous system, telling you that you're safe and in control. Uh, rather than tracking your biometrics, the Apollo Neuro technology is proven to actively improve your health as it strengthens and rebalances your atomic nervous system. Your heart rate variability improves 
which means you're building your resilience to stress. So you spend less time in fight or flight mode and get more time to rest and digest. Over time, your body learns to recover from stress more quickly so you can relax, sleep better, and find deep, meaningful focus anytime and anywhere. But consistency consistency is key. Like a workout, your nervous system, uh, like a workout for your nervous system, consistency is key. The more you use it, the better it works. Schedule Apollo Neuro modes to play when you need the most and seeming seamlessly flow through your day and through your night. Uh, and so again, you can use it for stress. You can use it for sleep. You can use it to be more um, active and stuff like that as well. They have a whole bunch of stuff on the research behind it. Um, this person here is kind of wearing the clip there. So the other side of it kind of touches the body and then sends off those vibrations. And now that the sensation of touch, it has the routine for daily use here. Personalize the app your way. You can schedule things. You can do progress tracking. You can integrate it with other stuff. Um, take control of how you like to feel. All that good stuff there. Uh, the science behind it here. I'm just going to breeze through this just a little bit. I guess it was developed by Dr. David Rabin by his research at the University of Pittsburgh Pro Program of Cognitive Effective Neuroscience. Wow. Pecan, <laughs> Pecan Laboratories. Uh, he's a neuroscientist and a psychiatrist. Cool. Um, so you have a sleep increase in REM mode. Average decrease in resting heart rate, average increase in the HRV, average increase in deep sleep as well. He did a whole bunch of research on stress itself and how it affects the body, how it affects the mind. Did a bunch of research on the science of touch, HRV and stress, heart rate variability, and so on and so forth. I wonder if... Uh, so this is the team behind everything. I don't think I remember seeing the Rabin guy there. Um, so yeah, so you guys let me know what you think about that there again. That device to me is one of those things that is going to allow some people to, you know, kind of maneuver around in this world a whole lot more, a whole lot easier uh, because they'll be able to, you know, reduce their stress and then get a lot, a lot better sleep. Uh, some people lose sleep all the time for various numbers of reasons. Uh, PTSD could be one of them or whatever. And maybe, you know, it could help out with that as well. All right. So the next thing that I have here is going to be NFT. So I was kind of browsing through my Roku device. Uh, Roku device is just a, you know, a little fire stick thing for TVs. Uh, to turn your regular TV into a smart TV or just kind of enhance your smart TV. has a whole bunch of different apps on it, yada, yada, yada. And then I came across something called Stream NFT. So Stream NFT, it has indexed over half a million NFTs from the most popular art marketplaces such as Foundation, Nifty Gateway, Rarible, and also Super Rare. The reason that much of this art is forlorn to obscurity is not because it's terrible, quite the contrary. It's because no one has ever attempted to organize, sort, and rank these NFTs and present only the best content on a Roku channel. Stream NFT has a lot of data on each of these NFTs and we're presenting them or some of this information such as the title, description, the created date, marketplace of origin and last sale price on the Stream NFT channel. To access this information, you can go through all that. Yeah, here we go. People for years have been trying to figure out how to display NFTs, how to discover NFTs, and how to experience such a vast and endless space. Stream NFT distills the marketplace into one on-demand programming of streams of NFTs backed by a powerful set of data. So I think, uh, can I click on? Yeah, 
So it's not much. You can't really see like a whole bunch here, but you got to get a couple of screenshots in. So you can actually see all of these NFTs. It's kind of like a marketplace on NFT or marketplace for NFTs on Roku device pretty much. And uh, again, I stream NFT on the Roku. Looks like it's, it's pretty well. 4.1 stars out of 18 different ratings. And I'll jump over here to the actual link for their website. It's being created by NFT Lab. So you have to go to nftlab.com forward slash stream NFT. And uh, they're considering themselves the first, uh, the world's first TV app to view your NFT art and half a million more. So again, it's not just your NFT art. You can actually view other people's art as well. It doesn't like you can buy them directly from Stream NFT, but it'll give you a link to where to purchase it from the marketplace like Foundation or Rarible or Looks Rare. So view your NFT art on your TV with any Roku device. Discover over half a million NFTs from the biggest marketplaces and seamless login via Web3 integration or explore with no login required. So that's just telling you how to set it up. All that good stuff. So really, yeah, not much there. Um, so yeah, so you guys, I'm not sure if anyone has actually tried this out before. Uh, I again, like I said, just this past weekend, I was just uh, browsing through different um, Roku apps and stuff like that. And I came across that stream NFT one there. And I was like, huh, that's interesting. And then what basically caught my eyes because, you know, like the logo just actually said NFT. And I was kind of trying to figure out what Roku was doing in the NFT space. Uh, but again, Pretty much every company is trying to figure out somehow, some way in order to get themselves front and center of all of this new technology. So as I mentioned before, if you aren't doing it, you're kind of a, <laughs> I mean, you're not late to the party, um, but you got your invite a little bit late. So you, you better start getting dressed for it. Um, the next thing that I have here is going to be EarthDAO, or I actually it's called Your EarthDAO. And uh, your Earth DAO is actually a really, really interesting metaverse. And as I mentioned to you guys before, your um, uh, Epic Games, Epic Games has a platform called Unreal Engine, and your Earth DAO is actually powered by Unreal Engine uh, on top of the Ascent blockchain, utilizing the Steam application. So if you're a gamer, you know what Steam is. If you're a developer, you know what Unreal Engine is. And if you're a crypto enthusiast, you probably know what Ascent blockchain is there. But yeah, so your FDAO is the go-to solution for building an industry-grade metaverse at the center of a business model, side project, or leisurely gaming experience. With the publicly verifiable Ascent blockchain, it at its backing, the platform allows users to build their own meta web uh, metaverses through owning land and your FDAO's native Ascent token where they can then create a passive income stream through virtual voyagers making a visit to their curated digital spaces. So again, with any metaverse, they want to do those land sales. Uh, but what's so nice about this one is that after they've, after you've acquired that land, uh, I don't believe they make any revenue off of it. You kind of like, you're your own person, that's your own digital real estate there. And so you get to do whatever you want from it. Uh, they mentioned something called meta webs and what those are is a immersive decentralized and gamified layer one infrastructure that are essentially havens for building engaging social media and entertainment content on top of uh, land ownership facilitates meta web creation with further which further creates a passive income stream through generating foot traffic to the attractions within your meta web whether that be a digital asset showroom, a museum, a theme park, or something else you wish to virtually manifest. In addition, extra revenue can be earned by trading such digital assets on uh, external NFT marketplaces. Uh, so you kind of see how their business model works here. Um,
then you have your meta citizen play to earn revenue i think they had a actual like a um let me see oh yeah yeah a comparison chart here of how they differ from some of the other top ones like sandbox and decentraland so their blockchain model is business to consumer as well as business to business they are open source so you can pretty much do what you want with it um they have a very close relationship between augmented reality and uh or virtual reality and actual reality they this is one that's really really good multi-chain wallet so they you can access it not just through one wallet not just through two wallets but multiple different wallets uh main one being of course metamask another one is their uh meta wallet there it is uh, protection of privacy and high performance applications as well and again they're all on top of their own blockchain so i believe sandbox and decentraland they're on top of the ethereum blockchain but your earth dial is going to be on top of ascent and i'm going to jump over here to their actual website this is your earth.io your earth.io and as you see here, this is just the first limited MetaWeb NFT land sales that is approaching. Uh, looks like they have a moon one that is actually called Lua, and actually a Mercury looking one that's called Maya Dim. And with these, um, they actually, again, plan on selling land, which uh, I think was like last week, or not last week, the first week of August. It was like something like that, like August 7th or something like that. Uh, but then they actually got pushed back about a month for technical purposes. So now you still have about 14 days before they open the floor to any and everyone actually purchasing land. Uh, and I did want to show you guys what this looks like since they're built on UE, uh, Unreal Engine 5. This looks really, 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 really realistic. So it's not all the pixelated stuff that you might see on Decentraland or on Sandbox. Sandbox. This, I mean, this is... This looks amazing in my opinion. I mean, this looks like a new age Grand Theft Auto game. And this is, I mean, this is the metaverse. This looks like a true video game. Um, this is their roadmap, metaverse, the world. Uh, again, I just want to show this video here real quick. What would it feel like to thrive in a metaverse of your own making, where anything is possible? It's not just about games or entertainment. It's about a new way to create, earn, inspire. And live life to the fullest. A new NFT frontier for humanity to explore. Imagine an ever-changing VR landscape shaped by your own mind. We are creating this world together to guarantee freedom in the new decentralized world. Powered by the Ascent blockchain, the future is here, and it's breathtaking. Awaken the creative God within you. Your Earth, the metaverse within. The metaverse within, that is correct. As you can see, um, they are changing, in my opinion, changing the game with that. Again, that looks super realistic, um, super cool as far as the metaverse side of things go. I can only imagine what that would feel like uh, being inside of a virtual reality headset, even some sort of augmented reality headset or, you know, like glasses or whatever. And actually kind of stepping in full front, um, of that whole platform. I mean, I, I, there's so much that you can actually do within the metaverse as far as uh, I'm concerned. This is a lot you can actually do. I know a lot of people 
still don't fully understand it and still don't understand why, you know, there's a big hype around it. But it's again, it's not just about games. Uh, it is like a true form of digital real estate where everything now is shifting over into that digital side of things and people are truly just living their entire lives inside of it. Um, so yeah, so that's going to be an interesting one there. If you plan to buy some land, this looks like you have about 14 days to get some money together in order for you to be able to do that. And then they will be kind of launching and rolling it out. Uh, so it's going to be interesting Q4. I think um, Q1 of 2023 is when they're going to be starting to launch a bunch of things as well. And one nice thing about that, again, is it's open source. So you can like make whatever you want. Um, again, create your own world inside of the metaverse there. All right. So let me know what you guys think about all of these different articles. I appreciate you taking the time out this Monday to uh, check in with me and see what I have to share with you guys. Uh, hit me up in the comments or any of my social media handles there at the bottom uh, of the description. And without further ado, that is all I have for you guys today. You all have a good one.